as interesting and fun for you as we possibly can. Uh, like William said, I'm Bethy, and I'm with the Main Street South Carolina program, a service of the Municipal Association of South Carolina, and we work with South Carolina communities to help them revitalize themselves to be the best communities they can possibly be. And we're so excited to have King Street um, admitted to our program as of January 1 this year, and we're going to um, we're going to be working with them for a long time to to bring to bring you where you need to be. Part of our process when we bring a community into our program is what we call a baseline assessment visit. So yesterday, all day, into the late night, I'm teasing, um, at late night at the Hiller House, um, and today all day, we have been talking to people, interviewing individuals, walking around downtown, going in stores, um, talking to industry folks, business folks, people who are involved in arts and culture, people involved in the banking industry, um, every possible person type you can think of in the community. Yesterday, it was elected official day. We spent a lot of time with elected officials. So we've, we've gotten a lot of good input. And the input that we get from you tonight, in addition to what we've had in the last couple of days, is going to allow us to start crafting our recommendations coupled with our expertise from working in many communities to help you take first steps and next steps in the revitalization process. I want to say this from the beginning, um, baby steps. Don't, don't be knocking on William's door in a month and saying, what's going on? Because there's going to be a lot of work going on behind the scenes. There's going to be a lot of planning, a lot of organization, and a lot of pulling people together, like you, who are going to be part of this, because we cannot do it without you. And we're going to be building slowly and making things make sense. We're not going to have a shotgun approach on what we do. We're going to be very focused in our areas. The four areas of the Main Street program that we use, which is the national model for the program, and has worked in over 2,000 communities, is organization, promotion and marketing, design, and economic vitality, or you can call it economic development, either way you want to call it. Now, <clears throat> if you think about a stool, it has four legs. And so we liken the model to a stool with four legs. If you take economic vitality away from that stool, it's going to start wobbling a little bit. So that's why we focus on all four points at the same time. They all have to dovetail, and they all have to make sense for the community. With that, I want to introduce my counterparts, um, Jeff Shacker. Jeff is field services manager with the Municipal Association of South Carolina. He works in the upstate and in the Midlands and helps municipalities and elected officials understand what they're supposed to be doing on a day-to-day -day basis. He also does strategic planning for councils. He's multi-talented. Where's me? Randy Wilson. Randy is, um, is a re recovering architect, not to steal your thunder. A uh, recovering architect, he has his own firm in Columbia called Community Design Solutions. He does work all over the United States, but he's really, he's really my guy. He works in all of my Main Street communities in South Carolina. So I'm going to turn it over to Randy, who's going to walk us through this great process. And this is where you come into play. Don't be shy. We need you to talk to us and tell, you, tell us what you truly feel about your town. Thanks, Bethy. All right, I'm the only thing standing between you and supper. So let's jump right in because I'm hungry too, or I will be soon. All right, so as Bepi alluded to, we, we outsiders, we can come in and we can take a look and we can observe and we can have some fairly educated guesses about some challenges you're facing and some potentially some things you should do. However, you guys really have the detailed wisdom about this place. You live here, you raise kids here, 
you work here, you dine, you reside, you invest here. And so we want to extract from you some information. And what's going to be interesting is the kind of questions I'm going to ask, anybody can answer. And here's the most important part. I am only asking for your opinion. So there are no wrong answers. As a matter of fact, I only have one ground rule tonight. And that is, please tell me your opinion, but don't debate somebody else's opinion. Okay? I just want to hear from you. Thank you for walking right in front of me, I'm William. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Um, we're going to come back to William and Megan in just a little bit. I'm just kidding. All right, so the first question I want to ask you is this. Let's pretend that your job is to persuade people about the benefits and the, and the great assets and facets of King Street. And the way you're going to do that is you have been asked to design a postcard that's going to be distributed many places across America. And what we want to do is to feature on this postcard the essence of, the best of King Street. So let's start first with imagery. What imagery, what image, what photos, what would you put on this postcard to capture the best of and the essence of King Street? And there's a massive door prize for the first answer. Black Rover. Oh, okay. He, he got ahead of you, Dexter. I was coming right to you. And, and the door prize is you get the satisfaction of having the first answer. Tonight. Dexter, what would you put on that? The oak tree. Okay. Now, like... The oak trees that are indigenous to this part of the yes. country, yeah, I love them. They're stunning with the big, wide canopies. I was wondering if you were talking about the, the king's tree. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, what else would you put on the poster? Part of Main Street. Part of Main Street, absolutely. The, his, the historic buildings and the layout, I agree with that. Yes, ma'am. What else? Courthouse. The courthouse. And who the said train. the train? The train, absolutely. You can't miss that. that. How many times many does it come through a day? A lot. It's got to be more than 40. It feels like more than 40. 40, 40 going north and on 20 going north and 20 going south. So I understand. Okay. All right. It felt like more when you're 15 feet away from it in the change of it. When there's a storm and there's none, you really miss them. I bet you're right. Bet. Well, yeah, you can ask Dexter at the last meeting. I was like, wait, something's wrong here. And it was a train park. It wasn't moving. Like, it's supposed to be moving, you know. Okay. All right. What else? What would you put on your postcard? Barbecue, very good. Pork or brisket? <laughs> pork, okay. Definitely yeah, pork. Definitely pork, yeah. We love some pig. All right, what else? And T.Y., you can answer too, even though I know you're manning the camera. Matter of fact, here I'll pose for you. Okay, all right. It's the Hunter's Paradise room here. Okay, so maybe we'd feature wildlife or hunting cabins or the river outdoors. Good. We've heard that a lot, just how much you value the great outdoors. What else would you put on a postcard? Me. There you go. <laughs> you know, I, I'm so glad you said that. No, no, no. I would because you, you'd be surprised how often the people say all these places and they forget about the people. Mm -hmm. And what I can tell so far is y'all are the best thing about King Street. Can I get an amen? Yeah. I'm a part-time pastor. If you like anything, you can say amen. Okay. So, all right, good. Put me. Put, put people on there. What else? I'll give you some hints if you run out. We got a well. I would say on Thomason Field, Thomason on Jim. That's a historical landmark. That's where Martin Luther King came to. Oh, okay. Got it. Thank you for clarifying that. And the museum. And the museum. What, what was the library? And it's a Carnegie, right? So it's not. Great. That's, that's huge. Yeah, I mean, think about that. You've got a Carnegie library and a Robert Milton Design Courthouse. They're probably less than a handful of communities in America who can post that. <coughs> Anything else you put on a postcard? All right. What, what did I tell you my other job was? I'm a part-time lawyer. All the church. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you can't go a block without seeing a steeple or a spire or a house of worship somewhere. So. And diverse combination. Yeah, absolutely. The diversity of that as well. Anything else you'd put in terms of imagery or photographs or whatever on this postcard? And by the way, I'm noticing people ain't talking. I'm going to call you out eventually. <laughs> Anybody else? I think our historical landmarks and our historical downtown parts of it. Yeah, um, absolutely. Visit. And I, I honestly, and not, not just because you own and run one, but you know, some of your historic homes are just stunning. Mm -hmm. I, I think that I would probably feature that. All right, Tim, what let's do? Let's, let's add to this postcard. We, we've talked about a lot of images, and I love the images you come up with. And just for the record, you'd, you'd be interested to know the very first answer this morning was also the Black River. Okay? Um, 
Let's add a word or words or phrases to this postcard. You know, maybe it's just a word. You know, while ago you talked about me or people. You know, I, I agree with that. Maybe it's our people or our home. Is there a word that kind of captures the spirit and the essence? Hospitality. Hospitality, great word. Family. Family, absolutely. What else? Business. We have some really business. old business. Good. And so maybe what you do is you 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 pair the word business with your 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 photograph of downtown and those buildings, and now you're cooking with gas. All right. What else? Friendliness. Friendliness. Who said that? Great answer. Smile and faces. Smile and faces. Okay, all right, all right. Since you did two words, now let's expand it to a phrase. So where's Mr. Treen? There he is. So Mr. Treen comes to you and he says, I'm going to put this gorgeous gateway sign that says, Welcome to King Street on the top. And at the bottom, I needed to have a little phrase. What would y'all say at the bottom? Family, friends, and smiling faces. Woo! Yeah. Good word. Family, friendly, smiling faces. Y'all come on in. There's some chairs up here in the front, chairs up here in the front. I have it on good record, T.Y. won't buy it. <laughs> it's just like my church. Nobody ever wants to sit up front. Okay. All right. All right, so I love that. That's good. What else? Give me, give me a... There's no wrong answers. Just what comes to mind? Well, farming is big, too. Okay. Not necessarily in the town, but the town thrives because of farming. There you go. So it seems like homegrown might have some mileage. Good. Yeah. What else? Y'all running out of ideas? The hunting and fishing paradise is already a little bit of song. Okay, all right, yeah, so let's capitalize this. All right, good. Great answers to that question. So let's move on to this one. And and so this is what's going to happen. In this particular question, many of you probably have your best friends right here in this town. But let's just pretend for this question your best friend or, a, or one of your best friends lives somewhere else. And they call you up one day and they say, hey, I'm thinking, they don't live here. I'm thinking about moving. And I'm thinking about either moving it to this place or King Street. Now, because this is your best friend, you want them to choose King Street. What would you tell your best friend to persuade them to move to King Street? And by the way, young man, and I see a young woman right there. Anybody can speak, even the youngest to the oldest in the room. What would you tell them? Why, why, would you, why would you want to live here? Because people care about you. Because people care about you. Right. We talked this morning a great deal about this is the kind of place where there's a birth in the family or a death in the family. People are bringing meals and they're praying for each other. All right. What else? People are going to care for you here. What else would we tell our best friend? Great neighborhood. Great neighborhoods. All right. Great sense of community. Very good. Beautiful best food. Yeah. Beautiful homes, and who said best food? There you go. Yeah, I learned a new dish today. Perla, is that right? <laughs> well, you told me, said, man, you don't use the word chicken bog here. How do you spell it? Perla? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, that way, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for helping me out. All right, so with food. Yeah, and, and this morning we talked about the fact that you you got this great opportunity to have a small town quality life, but you aren't far from just a whole ton of other places if you want something to do. All right, what else would you tell your best friend to persuade him or her to move here instead of somewhere else? Friendliness. Opportunity, yeah. You want to flesh that out or just the fact that we, 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 have a, we have a beautiful structure, but yeah. we have a lot of opportunities for small businesses that, that aren't already taken and the opportunity to thrive on, on the fact that we have needs that aren't being met yet within our community. Absolutely. And, and I th it seems to me, and, and not to put words in anybody's mouth, but you have opportunity on another scale too. What I mean by that is like you're small enough that you, well, unfortunately she just left, but... She said, I saw y'all eating out on the front porch because I, I knew y'all weren't from here because I don't know you. So you're small enough for everybody to know you, but you're big enough to have opportunities. I mean, think about how many medical facilities you have. Think about how many buildings you have. Think about um, 
course, one other thing I was going to mention, but I've already forgotten. But, but so you're, you're small enough to know everybody, but big enough to have opportunities. Um, any other things that you would tell your best friend to persuade them? Yes, sir. There you go. Absolutely. Go to compare to some other ones around here. Great job. And we soon have a brand new house. That's what I heard. Congratulations. That's terrific. All right. Now we're going to flip the question. <laughs> so that we still All right. <laughs> so here's here's something true in life. I, I know of at least three people in this room. I know for a fact that I, Dare, and William, we married way over our heads. Okay? Now William especially did. <laughs> I don't. We need to hold a special prayer service for Megan. Yeah. <laughs> Have put up with this man in the back. All right. All joking aside, I really did marry well. And, and, and my wife's family is amazing. So I got lucky. My mother-in-law's fabulous. But I understand not everybody's that lucky. So for the sake of this question, just indulge me. Let's pretend you ain't got a good mother-in-law. Okay? And, and so now, instead of your best friend calling you, it's your mother-in-law that you don't quite see eye to eye with. She's calling you and says, hey, I'm thinking about either moving to so-and-so place or King Street. Now, what are you going to tell this mother-in-law you don't see eye to eye with? Dissuade her from moving to King Street to get all up in your business. So what would you tell your mother-in-law to dissuade her from coming to King Street? Now, be not nice. crying. So what is, what's, what'd you say? Did you say crime? Uh, okay, yeah, so there's crime. Okay, very good. And we can explore later about what's real, what's perceived. But don't have a Walmart. Don't have a Walmart. There you go. All right. What else would you say? No taxi cabs. Yeah, all right. That, that's that's no public transportation. That's important. And a lot of things that you need, you'll have to go out of town to get. You, did y'all hear what she just said? Mm -hmm. A lot of things you need, you have to go out of town to get. As a matter of fact, you're so smart, I have that very question and about two more questions. We're going to come back to that. <laughs> what else would you tell your mother-in-law? There you go. That's exactly right. You're back to my other point. Yeah, everybody's going to be all up in your business. <laughs> yeah, we, my wife and I, we live in what's called Elwood Park. It's this really tiny neighborhood in downtown Columbia, but it's full of historic homes like y'all's. But I mean, these houses are close together. And you want to talk about people up in your business? When somebody comes to you and they say, we like the color you painted your dining room, it's like, you ain't been in my house. <laughs> How do you know that? All right, what else? What else are you going to tell your mother-in-law? There aren't a lot of places to eat. There you go, exactly. There aren't a lot of places to eat. But you can't get perlo. I don't have spell, but anyway. <laughs> Anything else you tell her? There's nothing uh, pretty much for recreation after there you hours. Go. Yeah, and, and I've heard, to, to this young man, especially for the youngsters, you go that way sometimes and you don't have to do? Okay, good. You're a good man. <laughs>